to So What with Sulky. I hope you're having a fantastic start of your day. Um, let me know if you are watching live. I'm not getting any comments yet. I don't think I have the right window up. So there we go. Hi, everyone. All right. I hope you had a fantastic Thanksgiving holiday um, and that, you know, you're enjoying all of the holiday happenings that are now going on and all of the fun holiday music that's happening in all the stores and all that good stuff is getting you in the spirit. I am going to hopefully continue that and get you in the spirit of making some holiday crafts, holiday handmade items. Um, today's project is really for all of you out there who like to do handwork, but I'm also going to put a little twist on it and show you a machine embroidery version if you would rather do machine embroidery rather than handwork. You can also use the pattern I'm going to show off today and do free motion work. Uh, so there are lots of ways to do the project I will be demonstrating today. It's not just for hand workers, but that's primarily what I'm going to show you. All right. And you know, hand work is fun um, every so often, even if it's not your craft of choice. Um, you know, it's nice to change it up and get our muscle memory back for all of those uh, great hand embroidery designs. And, you know, maybe that's how you learned to sew when you were growing up. Um, I certainly learned to sew first by sewing by hand, which, you know, it really teaches you how stitches are formed. And so when you go to start using a sewing machine, then you kind of get the concept a little bit easier um, and it's just easier for you to kind of transition um, into machine sewing. So this is also a great project you can do if you're teaching someone to sew, no matter their age. It also makes a great kid craft. So if you're looking for something to do with the kids or grandkids over winter break when they're out of school, this would be a great starter project for them and something that does double duty. So before I get to it, I want to remind you all of our New Year's Sewing Eve Sew Along. I know a lot of you who watch religiously every week here on Sew so What um, have already uh, registered for the event, and that's great. For all of you who have not, we decided to extend our coupon for the event so you can still get it for only $5.99. It includes this brand new bag pattern by Sally Tomato, which we will be working on. That is the sew along. It also includes a embroidery collection, which has three patch designs. And I will be teaching you how to make these in the hoop of your embroidery machine. They're so cute. You can use them to embellish your bag or other projects. And I will be showing you how these come together in the hoop of your embroidery machine, and also how to sew them onto your bag or other items. All right, so make sure that you register because although we extended the coupon, it's only good until tomorrow at midnight. So register now, you'll get all the um, uh, reminder emails so you don't forget to tune in on New Year's Eve. This is happening at 12 noon Eastern time. So you'll still have plenty of time to do some more festivities uh, or go out and about if that's what you choose to do on New Year's Eve. Um, you'll have plenty of time to do that and you'll have a brand new bag that you finish during the day to strut your stuff with out on the town on New Year's Eve night. So I hope you will all join us for that. It's going to be super fun. Uh, Jessica Barrera from Sally Tomato and I have been working on this for, I mean, just about a year, just about since we finished last year's New Year's Eve sew along. So it's been a long time coming and we're so, so excited to bring it to all of you. So I hope you will enjoy or join us for that. All right. Also up while you're registering for that New Year's Eve sew along at sewingonline.sulky.com. You will also find our lovely llama free webcast. 
This webcast is with Desiree Havoc of Desiree's Designs. We will be learning how to create this uh, really great large scale llama applique in the hoop of our embroidery machines. As you can see, the llama is made of this really great llama faux fur. So she's gonna give us lots of tips and tricks for how to embroider on plush fabrics like this, how to get this really great result so you have this fun texture going on in your embroidery. We will also learn how to make tassels using sulky, really heavyweight thread. And those make really great additional uh, 3D embellishments on your finished piece. And you can create a pillow like this, or you can use the same exact techniques and designs to create a wall hanging. So if a pillow isn't your thing, there's lots of things you can do with this design collection. And I mean, so cute. You can display this for Valentine's Day and beyond. Anytime you wanna create a really cute gift for a loved one, use this lovely llama and you'll hit it out of the park. So we're gonna learn lots of techniques. You'll also learn how to create more texture and dimension by using sulky puffy foam. If you've ever looked at puffy foam at sulky.com and wondered, what do you do with that? We're gonna be using it for this project and that's super exciting because I don't know that we've done a webcast or video cast showing puffy foam yet, which is a crime because it's so fun. So I think you'll really enjoy this free event. So be sure to register for that as well while you are at sewingonline.sulky.com, grabbing up your great deal for New Year's Eve just go on and register for this one as well. You will get a free embroidery design just for registering. Um, it's a really cute scroll work, uh, heart themed embroidery design that you can use with poly sparkle. You can use with 30 weight cotton blendables, or you can even use your trusty 40 weight rayon for that design. It's a nice open work uh, heart design. Uh, so it's worth registering just to grab up that cute freebie. All right, so all of that's out of the way. I hope you will all join us for both of those events coming up soon. The New Year's Eve event obviously is on New Year's Eve at 12 noon Eastern time. And Lovely Llama is December 13th. That is a Monday coming up really soon. December 13th, Monday at 2 p.m. Eastern time. That's when we will be going live. If you cannot attend either event live because you have other things to do, we get it. Everything will be available on demand for you to watch at your leisure whenever you are available once the live event ends. So you will go to the same event page and you will see the video in its entirety for either event. So even if you can't attend live or you're not sure if you'll be available, be sure to register because again, you can go back at any time, review the information or watch it from beginning to end um, on demand. So really, really great offerings at the Sulky Education site. All right. Lots of you coming in and saying, good morning. Suzanne's already signed up. Looking forward to Puffy Foam instruction. All right, Maggie's already signed up for the Aurora Bag Sew Along for New Year's Eve. That's great. Thanks for saying hello, everyone. Hi, Betsy, good to see you. All right, so another thing I need to talk about because it directly relates to the project I'm going to talk about today is, dun da da dun so many of you asked about a mystery box for the holidays. Does everyone know about the Sulky Mystery Box? The Mystery Box is, you know those fun sort of uh, toy themed advent calendars you can get for your kids, grandkids. I get one for my kids every year and I gift it to them on the day after Thanksgiving because traditionally um, in my house that's when we start decorating for Christmas and so it kind of gets them excited about the season and they have something to look forward to on December 1 when they get to open their first little gift. Um, you know, there's Lego ones and there's um, ones that have uh, just little toys and activities. Well, at Sulky, our kind of version of that is our mystery box. 
Now, instead of opening one thing every single day, you get to open this and see everything all at once. You can obviously make this into a fun little challenge uh, between your sewing friends and maybe challenge each other to make something uh, using the mystery box contents. Um, it's kind of like Chopped, you know, Chopped on the Food Network. It's kind of like Chopped, but for sewing. Um, so everything in this box is valued at over $50. And you get 13 full-size Sulky products. This includes a lot of our best-selling threads, some new things that maybe you've never tried before, also some fun sewing-themed gifty items. These make great gifts for your sewing buddies in your sewing guild, or you know what? Just a gift for yourself. Why not? Now, these are only $29.99. Uh, you're getting so many fun, fun things. And we decided to throw in a free gift with purchase. So when you get the mystery box, you will also get the Wintergreens Hand Embroidery Collection, valued at $9.99. Now, this is a hand embroidery pattern. It was designed by Amy Davis um, of Daisy Eyes Handmade. And this is a really beautiful Wintergreens alphabet. And all of these can, uh, letters can be printed onto Sulky Stick and Stitch and sewn out. And you can create so many beautiful holiday themed projects with them. And they are really just, they're not really holly. It's more like, um, you know, winter greenery um, with some little berries on them. And there's a little bird. So it can really last through the holidays and beyond all throughout winter. It's a great design collection. So I wanted to show you a project that you could create using some of the items that may or may not be in your mystery box. So all of that to say, I'm going to show you how to create these really cute mini hoop place cards. I use them as place cards for Thanksgiving this year, and I will show you that version um, I'm also going to show you this version using that Winter Greens hand embroidery collection. Now, if you decide to not grab up that great deal mystery box, um, I, I get it, I guess. I mean, it's a great, great deal. You'll love everything inside. You might find something in there that you've never used before from Sulky, and now you can't live without it, honestly. Like, can I just say, that is how the slitting pen was born. I know a lot of you say that you got one of these slitting pens that I'm always talking about here on So What, that you got one of these in your mystery boxes. I think maybe last year we included it as one of the items in some of the boxes and uh, the popularity was born out of that mystery box. So you might find a tool that is just your new favorite thing that you never even knew existed before. All right, so anyways, inside the mystery box, I'm going to give away a little bit of the mystery because I happen to know that every single box is going to contain a three inch embroidery hoop. So cute. This one, I'll just show you this one. This three inch embroidery hoop is gonna be in every mystery box. We wanted to make sure everybody got this little goodie because it's so great for the holidays. You can use it as a place card like this. You can add a little hanging loop and use it as an ornament. You can make it into a gift tag that then the person can go put it on their wall and have some wall art. Um, so it really does triple duty and there's probably lots more things you can create using these cute little mini hoops. And again, these are great for kid crafts because little kid hands can really hold on to this and practice some stitching. So three inch embroidery hoop is gonna be included in every mystery box. Now the other contents may vary, but you will obviously get sulky threads, you will get sulky stabilizer, and again, you will get gifties and other fun items 
that you can add to your sewing room. So I'm gonna go through a few different ways to do the embroidery on these place cards. And you can kind of choose which one is right for you, which one you prefer doing, um, or maybe try a new technique that you haven't tried before. So I'm gonna start out with the iron-on transfer pen technique. Now, this is to write a name or draw your own design onto your fabric and then sew through it using your hand embroidery stitches. You can also use that Wintergreen's hand embroidery pattern and instead of printing it onto stick and stitch, you can draw over the lines using your iron-on transfer pen um, and then transfer it to the fabric. The important thing to note is that you have to draw your design in a mirror image, okay? So what you will do is print out your Wintergreen's pattern or draw your name or design and then flip it over and trace over your drawing using the transfer pen. Does that make sense? I'm gonna show you how that's done in some photos here, but I just wanted to give you a little bit overview uh, before I start showing you. So here I've gathered some supplies. I've got the transfer pen and these transfer pens come in lots of different colors as well. So this is like a brown color that kind of coordinated with the thread because the thing about the transfer pen is you're going to see it a little bit underneath of your thread. And I'm using a 12 weight cotton thread here. So it has really good coverage. Um, and I actually also use two strands of it. Um, one strand of this thread equals two strands of your traditional embroidery floss that you would find at the craft store. So it already has good coverage just with one strand, but then I doubled that up and used two strands. So it mostly covered my transfer pen, but you can still, you know, if you're really persnickety about it, you can still see it underneath of your thread work. So you want to pick a pen color that's going to coordinate either with the fabric or with the thread that you're using. So it kind of disappears, okay, and doesn't really um, call attention to itself, right? All right, so I've got the transfer pen. I have the cute little three inch hoop. I have a spool of 12 weight cotton petites. This is one of the blendable varieties. Absolutely love it. And then I used a piece of Essex linen from Robert Kaufman. I love these fabrics so much. Um, this was for the version that I did for my Thanksgiving table. So you can see it's a very kind of fallish theme. Now it's very easy to just switch up your thread color, switch up your fabric color, and make this more for the holiday that you want to celebrate. All right, so gathering the supplies. Now, with your fabric, first you wanna make sure you're using a piece of fabric that is at least two inches larger than your mini hoop on all sides. You wanna give yourself a lot of room um, and you can always just trim this up afterwards. But you wanna make sure that you have enough fabric that you can hoop this um, nice and securely. Then you will pink the edges. You can also serge finish or zigzag finish those edges with something like a linen. There is a little bit of, um, you could see this edge I left without pinking it and the rest I did just to show you. With the linen, there's a little bit of, you know, fraying here and the pinked edges don't do that whatsoever. So if this takes you a little bit longer to do, or maybe you're moving it around and, you know, sitting on the couch one day and in your sewing room the next, or if kids are doing this project, you wanna make sure that the edges are not fraying like this. So some kind of edge finish, pinking shears, serge finish, zigzag, something really quick and easy just to make sure that that is nice and tidy. All right. So you wanna make sure that your design or the name that you're drawing um, fits within the hoop ring. And you don't wanna to get too close to the edges of that inner hoop ring because it will be very hard to maneuver your needle 
around that wooden hoop. Uh, you want to make sure, you know, to give yourself a little bit of border. And you will notice in this version, I got really close to the edges. And I'm also going to show you uh, what to do when that happens. And you might want to get a little closer to the edges with a design like this. Now with a name, um, I think it's more aesthetically pleasing to have a little bit more border around the name. So uh, that's entirely up to you. Also, if you are teaching a kid or maybe putting these at the kid's table for them to kind of finish or work on while you're preparing the meal and, you know, keep their hands busy, um, it'll be easier for them to negotiate if you give them a little bit more border inside of that hoop ring. So once you've finished your design, like I said, we're gonna use the iron-on transfer pen for this method. I'll go over some more methods momentarily, but we've gotta flip the paper over and then trace our design in a mirror image using that transfer pen so that when we go to transfer it to the fabric right side, it reads properly. So a light box is really handy for this if you happen to have one. We do have light boxes at sulky.com and they're so awesome. They are these wafer thin light boxes. Like look how light this is. It's the most amazing tool in my sewing room and it has this adjustable light level. So this is the light that I prefer. If you like something a little bit dimmer, you simply hold on to the button and the light dims a little bit. Then when you go to turn it back on, it will go back to your preferred light level. Not to mention it is so wafer thin. Look at that. And we also have um, some cutting mats that fit right over the light board that you can see the light through and they have all of your dimensions, um, inch marks, centimeters, all of that good stuff for cutting out patterns as well. So this is an awesome tool. I highly suggest you put it on your Christmas wish list um, for all of those people who are asking what you want for Christmas. You tell them I want a daylight wafer light box from sulky.com and all of the fun accoutrements that go with it. <laughs> all right. So you can use a light box to reverse your or mirror image your pattern. You can also, um, you know, tape this to a window and kind of use your uh, iron on transfer pen to uh, draw the mirror image of it. I will say that is more difficult because you want the ink from the transfer pen to flow into the tip of the pen. Um, and so if you're looking up, and trying to do this on a window, it could be a little bit more challenging for you. You might need to saturate the tip of the pen a little bit more uh, while you're working through it, but just do a couple of practices um, and you'll get it right. All right. So here I have my name that I drew out, Hannah, um, on the light box and it is flipped over so that I can trace the reverse side. Um, the other thing you can do is trace the reverse side using, um, you know, on a by taping it to a mirror, and then go ahead and put it on your surface and go over that traced reverse side uh, with your transfer pen as well. But you can see how easy it is using that light box. All right, so I don't if if you've never used one of these iron-on transfer pens, here you could see they come in so many different colors. Okay, and so you can even color code your design. Let's say you are transferring the Wintergreens design and you wanna give yourself a visual clue for when you need to switch threads. Great idea to use some different colors of transfer pen for the different colors you're using of the thread so that you have that visual clue because otherwise I just keep going, 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 sewing and all of a sudden my design is all one color because I forgot to switch threads and I just kept going and following the lines. Um, so that's a really great option is using those iron-on transfer pens and picking some different colors. 
So you need to get the ink kind of flowing um, at first. So you wanna kind of push the pen up and down on some scrap paper to get the ink flowing into the tip of the um, pen. Then you can lightly go over your design um, and just trace the mirror image of it. So now it's time to transfer it to the fabric. So we're going right on the fabric right side here. So cut out your piece of paper a little bit beyond the edges and center it onto your fabric square with your nice pinked or serge finished edges. And then you're just going to apply heat from an iron. There it is upside down. You'll just apply heat from an iron ever so gently. Don't go back and forth because you don't want to kind of smudge the color. Just go straight up and down, apply the heat, and then peel away your paper and your design will be revealed. Now I used that brown iron-on transfer pen so you can see it's rather light here, but that's exactly what I wanted. Just enough that I could see it so that it's not super visible once the thread is on there. It kind of disappears into the fabric, but it's dark enough that I can see it well enough to follow the lines with my needle and thread. All right. So for something like a lettering design, I, for the most part, do back stitches. Um, but when you have a design like this that is more scripty, you could also do stem stitches. Stem stitches kind of stack on each other like this as you go along. So it's really great for curved areas. If you have more straight letters, and I'll show you a version of that, um, back stitches are great and just fine. And very simple for newbies, either newbies to handwork or younger sewers, very easy to understand and, um, you know, practice getting your, your stitch lengths rather even. And you know what? If they're not, this is all in fun. Um, and if they're not even, that just kind of adds to the handmade quality of this. And in my opinion, sometimes it makes it even more special. So here's another version I did with a more um, straight font. Um, so this is showing you how this looks on the light box. Um, I went ahead and traced the name um, on the mirror image of the name. And there you can see I've got um, my iron-on transfer ink uh, sandwiched between the paper and the fabric. That's on the light box. Now you can't press on the light box, so you need to move it over to your pressing station and um, iron that on. Now you can see I missed some little portions of the name um, as far as transferring it to the fabric, but that was okay for me because I'm going to sew over this with tons of thread. So no biggie. Um, for this one, I used a black iron-on transfer pen just so you could see it really, really well. Um, and you could see that I missed some of the lettering, but you could still follow the lines and it's really just there to help you uh, follow your design. You don't have to make it perfect when you get your transfer on there. All right, and then this is showing you the back stitch um, or the beginning of the stitch. Now you can do a couple of things as far as starting and, be, um, starting and ending your stitching. You can leave long thread tails at the beginning and end, and then you can weave those in through the back side of your work um, so that you don't have any knots along the front side or anything that feels bumpy when your work is completed. Or honestly, for a project like this, something little that's gonna be an ornament um, that you're not really gonna be touching and feeling all of the time, you could definitely start off with a knot and end with a knot. Um, it's entirely up to you. For beginners, starting with a knot, ending with a knot is probably easier so that they don't accidentally pull that thread tail through when they're creating the first stitch. 
and here the embroidery is complete. And you can see a little bit of shadow from that iron-on transfer pen, but I actually kind of like it. I kind of like the look of that. It's not bothering me that it's there. I was a little bit heavy-handed when I transferred my ink on this particular one versus the scripty version that I showed you previously. Uh, so do a couple of tests, like I said, until you get it right. You're really only using about a five or six inch square of fabric um, for these little three inch hoops. So you can practice your transfer on a couple different fabric squares until you get it how you want it. And it would be just so cute to do one in everybody's name. You know, if you have eight grandkids, this is something really special you can make for each one of them. And each one can be different. The font can be different. You can add little things to um, the finished hooping. For example, I added some little felt leaves to the top of this one and just sewed those on with a running stitch. So really cute idea. If you're doing a more holiday or Christmas themed one, you could do some holly berries at the top and some little sprigs of greenery. You can even use some actual greenery, you know, trim it off of a garland hot glue it to the top. That would be really cute. If you have um, a kid or grandkid that's into unicorns or rainbows, you could add some sequins, maybe even a unicorn horn to the top of it, and really make each one kind of suited to the recipient. So really cute ideas you can do for this that, again, you know, it can be on their place card for the holiday meal, and then they can go and take it and put it on the tree as an ornament. They could put it next to their stocking. Um, just such cute, cute ideas that you can do with these. Another thought that I had um, for the kids table, you know, I don't know if, if you all still do a kids table, give me a thumbs up and let me know. Um, we try to include the kids in with the adults. Sometimes it works better than others, but, uh, you know, we try. Maybe a kid's table is a better solution. <laughs> but at any rate, what I suggest is at the kid's table or just at the kid's place setting, you can start their name and give them the needle and thread so it's in progress and just let them finish it. Again, it gives them something to do while they're waiting for the meal or maybe um, when the meal is finishing and they all wanna get up and find their phones and all those things, they can stay seated at the table doing something busy with their hands and finishing up their ornament. And that's something really special because the two of you did it together even if you weren't sitting together, right? You started it, they finished it. So something really neat and fun to do. Um, again, this one is just in progress with um, about a 10 inch, 12 inch um, length of thread double stranded on here. And the blendables are a really great idea because they don't have to change or swap the thread colors. And they still get beautiful variegation and different threads featured in, or different colors rather, featured in the design. So, you know, if you don't want to hand out needles to your kids, or maybe they're a little bit too young to do the actual sewing, you could give them some embellishments to add to their ornament at the kids' table. So they can have their name already embroidered on here, and maybe you have, you know, a pile of buttons they could glue on, um, or, Again, some little sequins gems or some already cut out pieces of felt and they can do some adornments um, and really make their ornament their own. So that could be a fun thing too. All right, I got a little um, preoccupied by actually sewing this one because it's fun and relaxing and these come together so quickly. So if you don't like doing handwork because let's face it, a lot of handwork takes a really long time. These are so quick and easy. You will not mind doing it by hand. 
Um, and, you know, it's something portable you can do uh, while you're binging some holiday shows or maybe taking a road trip. Um, you know, they come together so quick and easy. I'm almost done with that letter just talking to you. All right, so let's go to the next version that I've prepared, and that is the stick and stitch transfer method. So stick and stitch is a water-soluble fabric-like stabilizer, and you can run it directly through your printer. So if you're grabbing up one of those mystery boxes today and you get your Wintergreens hand embroidery alphabet design, um, which is the entire alphabet, you can print out the letters that you want or the whole alphabet, really, um, right through your printer using Sulky Stick and Stitch. Cut out the letter that you want to feature in your mini hoop and... I wanted to show you how these letters pretty much fit in the hoop, but you can see some of those winter greens extend beyond the hoop edge. So you know what? We're just gonna go as far as we can with our stitches and leave those other ones unsewn. It doesn't matter because all of that printed stabilizer is going to wash away when our design is complete so as long as we have that letter represented really well in the center of our mini hoop, it really doesn't matter that we have all of the greenery sewn out. All right, so we're just gonna go as far as we can. And you can see I have a little bit of border, maybe an eighth of an inch. This one goes really right up close to the edge. Um, and if you want, you can remove it from the hoop and stitch those last little fronds um, outside of the hoop and then rehoop your work. Because we've gotta take this out of the hoop anyways to wash away our stabilizer. So if you wanna add more stitching that kind of creeps into um, the, the hoops, that's entirely up to you. All right, so my point being with that is you don't need to get discouraged that your design isn't fitting exactly in that three inch hoop ring. You can either resize it if you would like to see the entire thing or just omit some of that stitching. We're still gonna get the idea of the beautiful design and it's really not going to affect the aesthetics of the final piece. So I just made sure that that R was gonna be centered in my hoop and just to get a visual representation of sort of the, the greenery I was going to omit, and if that was okay with me, if the bird looked cute, all of those good things. All right, so after you cut out that letter, you're going to remove the paper backing, and the back of this stabilizer is sticky. Stick and stitch, get it? So you're going to stick this now to the right side of your fabric. So I, again, used Robert Kaufman linen, but this one is a metallic linen. So it has little flecks of sparkles running through it. I'm not sure if you can see it very well, but um, it's just really pretty um, kind of greenish, metallic-y sparkles in the weave of the linen. So go ahead and center up your stick and stitch design on your fabric square or rectangle. And then we're gonna put it in that hoop. And you can see again, some of that design is wrapped in between the hoop rings. Totally fine, we're just not gonna sew that part. And again, I've pinked the edges of this, you can see here in this image, um, so that they're nice and neat and contained. So now we can start sewing through all layers using that stick and stitch as our guide. And you can use the red, green, and white that is in, um, or that's indicated by the sequence chart for this design, or you can change it up, use a blendables, holiday blendables that we have um, that have already red, white, and green running through it, and use the same thread for the entire design. Entirely up to you where you wanna go with it. 
All right, I do have a few questions coming in, so let me go ahead and address those before we get too far into the demo for this one. All right, do all letters have the same background design? Um, all of the letters in the collection do have the greenery, um, the little holly or berry um, dots, which I did a French knot for all of those little dots, and all of them have a bird somewhere. It could be on the outside of the letter. It could be on the inside of the letter. I think the D has the bird on the inside. Um, so it's a little, there are variations between the letters, um, but they all are in the same style. All right. Where do you get the sparkly linen? Um, so for the Robert Kaufman linen, um, you can get some of it at fabric.com, I know. Um, and your local quilt shop might have some. Um, you can go on the Robert Kaufman Fabrics website, and I believe they have a dealer locator or a retailer locator, uh, so you can see if it's available near you. But I know they do carry some of it at fabric.com as well. All right. Haven't done anything with hand embroidery. I need to brush up on this. <laughs> You know, we have a few webcasts um, at sulky or sewingonline.sulky.com where we have provided a hand embroidery stitch chart for you to follow. Um, I know our last year's New Year's Eve event, we did a machine embroidery and a hand embroidery version of the design that we featured on that bag last year on the Zelda bag. Um, so there's an extensive hand embroidery tutorial using stick and stitch as well um, within that event. So if you do need a refresher course, you can check out sewingonline.sulky.com and find a webcast or video cast to follow and get really great instruction on handwork, especially these different transfer techniques. Um, we also have a video series on YouTube called Hand Embroidery for Kids. Now, even if you're not a kid and you're just a beginner or you need to brush up on your skills, that's a really great video series to watch because it goes through the very basics. You will learn like the three um, stitches that you really need to know, back stitch, running stitch, and I think satin stitch or stem stitch, I can't recall, um, but you will see all of those up close and personal. And it's a really easy to follow video series, completely free to watch on our YouTube channel. Uh, so if you do need a refresher, that's a great place to start as well. All right. Just ordered my first mystery box. All right. They are telling me that we are running low on those now. So if you want to get one of those mystery box, um, mystery boxes, be sure to grab one up because once they're gone, they are gone. We don't restock them. All right. Signed up for both classes. Sounds good. Did not realize the monogram designs include birds. I know. There's a little bird on every letter somewhere. So it's like a scavenger hunt. You can find them all. <laughs> pretty, pretty cute. All right. A lot of people haven't done hand embroidery in a while. So I'm glad, or I hope I can in inspire you um, to do some because again, it's really kind of therapeutic, you know? <laughs> um, and a great way to brush up on your skills and to teach others about sewing. All right, so let's continue on with our stick and stitch embroidery transfer version that we're doing here with the Winter Greens Hand Embroidery Collection. Um, I did want to mention this collection is available at sulky.com. It's $9.99. You get all of the letters um, and the instructions for printing out and using the stick and stitch. Um, but again, it's included absolutely for free as a free gift with purchase of that mystery box. So another great additional value um, to that really fun product. All right. So here I have the embroidery completed. You could see where I just omitted some of the greenery. No big deal. Got all the greenery done. I have all my French knots done. I did my little bird in white. You can do your bird in any color you like. 
You can create a little cardinal if you want out of that bird. And then I also omitted the little bit of greenery that's inside of the R. You could see that's just printed and there's no stitching there. And that was just my personal choice. Um, so there's supposed to be, as you can see, a little greenery frond and berry inside right here. And I just left that out so that you could see it really well. Um, but if you want to add that in um, or not omit it, please feel free. This is your project and you have fun with it any way you want. All right, so like I mentioned, we've gotta take this out of the hoop so that we can wash away that stabilizer. So remove your hoop carefully and there's no need to press it or anything yet. We're going to run this under cool running water, running water. You do not want to let it sit in a pool of water because what can happen is the uh, stick and stitch can kind of lift above the fabric and kind of hover there a little bit. I know it's weird. Then you go to take your fabric out and the pattern may like shift because it's like floating on the fabric surface and the ink that's left over from that can transfer to another part of the fabric. I've had this happen to me before. I know it sounds weird, but running water is really the best way of getting rid of the stick and stitch stabilizer just to avoid that happening. Now, I have had instances where I've used running water to get rid of most of the stick and stitch stabilizer, at least all the parts that were still printed on. And then there might be a little bit left over and I can kind of soak that, um, but giving it agitation while it's sitting in sort of the pool of water. But first and foremost, you wanna make sure you're using running water to remove it. And if you have one of those like kitchen sprayers that has a little bit more water pressure behind it, those are really great too for removing the stick and stitch. Um, the little fibers just kind of roll right off of the fabric surface. And then you can run lots of water through your sink um, and make sure to uh, get it all, you know, through the system um, and all of that stuff. And from what I've read and all of those good things, uh, it does not damage your pipes in any way. It's totally water soluble, little fibers that just kind of break apart and dissolve um, into the water. So it's such a great, great embroidery transfer method. And everyone's going to think you are such an artist for creating this and have no idea how you just did that all freehand, right? It can be our little secret. So after you uh, rinse away all of that stabilizer, you want to just dry this flat on a towel. And what you can do is put it on your towel, you know, while it's still saturated and roll up your towel around it and kind of get rid of the excess moisture then unroll it and like flatten the fabric out a little bit so it's nice and flat and just let it dry completely on your towel. Then if you need to do a little bit of pressing from the wrong side around the design, you can do so once it's totally dried. All right, so then you just need to re-hoop it. So make sure that your letter is nice and centered so that your little screw at the top is uh, perfectly along the upper edge center um, because if you do decide to use this as an ornament or a gift tag and you want to put a hanger on it, you want to make sure that your design looks nice and straight and tidy. Okay, so now we've got to finish our hoop. We don't want everybody to see uh, the wrong side of our embroidery. I mean, it's not that big of a deal and it looks okay, but let's go ahead and finish it up. So whether you're doing uh, this version I talked about here or the winter greens hand embroidery version, we've got to finish it in some way. So what we're going to do is run a gathering stitch a little beyond that inner hoop ring and you can do this from the wrong side so that you have good visibility all the way around. Run a gathering stitch and pull your fabric tight around the back of the embroidery. Um, 
Another idea, and I really was saving this for the machine embroidery version, but you can also use it for the handwork versions. Um, Sulky Tender Touch. Tender Touch is a fusible cutaway stabilizer. So it's a permanent stabilizer. And it's the stabilizer that you use when you are embroidering, let's say, a t-shirt or something that's going to be worn. And you don't want embroidery stitches to be kind of scratchy against your skin while you're wearing the garment. So Tender Touch is fused to completed embroideries from the wrong side, and it sort of seals up those stitches and gives you a nice silky feeling against your skin. It also stabilizes the embroidery over time so that if you're wearing something stretchy like a t-shirt, uh, the integrity of your design remains intact. So Tender Touch also would conceal the wrong side of handwork. So you can do your gathering stitches, you know, trim up your fabric edges, do your gathering stitches so that they cover either the whole embroidery or just that uh, hoop edge and have that tender touch already fused to the wrong side of the work. That way, if you still can see some of those stitches, despite your gathering stitches going around the work, um, most of them will be concealed or at least protected for the future uh, with that layer of tender touch added to the wrong side. All right, so here you could see I'm gathering up the fabric edge and I did not trim it for this because I'm also going to add a felt backing to this particular one. So if you're making something that you want to be permanent, like an ornament, you want it to last through time and be a really great heirloom gift, right? You want to kind of finish it with a nice felt backing. And this way, uh, you can't pop the embroidery out. It is there for good. So I didn't need to trim up my fabric edges. I just gathered, even though I had those uh, taller corner points, I just gathered the edge so that my fabric could be concealed by my felt backing. All right, so to create that felt backing, you will simply use your ornament to trace the circle that's going to cover uh, the back of your hoop. So use some kind of chalk pencil and just trace around that circle and cut it out. And then I was, you know, kind of testing and making sure that I didn't have any felt edges that were going beyond the hoop or going to show. So you want to test and make sure that it's going to fit properly and then use some kind of craft glue or hot glue to make sure that you um, secure your felt ring really nicely around the hoop. And then your project is completed. So here we have our nice ornament with our nice felt backing. You can't see any of the embroidery. And alternatively, you could, if you wanted to be able to use this over and over again for other things, you could do your gathering stitches. And like I said, add your tender touch to the wrong side so that it's kind of protecting that embroidery from snags or just over time um, or storage, things like that. So you could do your gathering stitch, have your tender touch attached, and you're good to go. So I mentioned that um, this is for handwork, but you could very easily showcase a machine embroidery design inside of your mini hoop. But before I get to that, I wanted to show you the versatility of the Wintergreens hand embroidery collection. So this is that same letter R, and I use the stick and stitch method and I sewed this to a kid's t-shirt. I enlarged the letter a little bit so that it was a focal point on the shirt. And this is a photo of right after I washed away all of that stabilizer. And you could see I did everything in two colors. I chose a white for all of the lettering as well as the uh, greenery sprigs. And then I did a little bit of a pink color for the little berries. 
So it kind of works beyond winter or beyond the holidays um, going into winter in this way. And then here it is all dried with my little munchkin is modeling. So cute. So, you know, you can really use this collection for so many things. It doesn't have to be for the place card project. T-shirts, personalized pajamas, um, wreaths or uh, pillows to personalize them with a monogram. It's just a really beautiful design collection. So like I mentioned, machine embroidery. This collection is also available as a machine embroidery collection. So you can grab up the whole collection, all the letters of the alphabet from A to Z in machine embroidery. So if handwork seems like it's going to take too much time for you, or you just prefer machine embroidery techniques, you can grab up the winter greens alphabet and you can do machine embroidery and just hoop your finished piece in the little three inch embroidery hoop. Gift it away as an ornament, make it into a gift tag. You could put a little pocket on the back to hold a gift card and just add to the gift and so cute. So to do this with machine embroidery, now your stabilizer is going to depend on the fabric that you choose. And you know, for this linen, I would probably use um, like Sulky Tear Easy would be great, which is a tearaway stabilizer. Um, but I would probably leave the stabilizer intact, no matter what stabilizer I use. Um, Soft and Sheer Extra, which is a really soft, nice, fusible stabilizer. That would work great for this linen because the linen has a little bit more of an open weave to it. And so when you're doing high speed embroidery, those open weaves can kind of stretch a little bit. And when you take it out of the hoop, you can get some little puckers in the design. So a fusible stabilizer or a tear easy that you apply with KK2000, which is our temporary spray adhesive, something to really make that stabilizer adhere to the fabric so that the fabric doesn't stretch out of place during embroidery, that's what you want for this. For this collection, you can use 40 weight rayon. You can also, it works great with 30 weight cottons or 30 weight blendables. So you can get the look of the 12 weight blendables before machine embroidery. It also works with the 30 weight poly sparkle, the little polyester thread that has flecks of metallic running through it. I have done this collection in all three thread weights I just mentioned, and it works with all three. The reason it works is because there are not a lot of fill stitches in this design. The only fill are those little berries and they're so small, they really just take a few stitches back and forth to create each little berry. So you can swap in a little bit heavier thread going from 40 weight to 30 weight and not have a lot of overlap or fill areas where your needle is trying to fit more thread in there than it can accommodate by the digitizer. So that is why you can swap in a 30 weight thread here for the 40 weight that is recommended and still have successful results. So you can try out some different versions of this design. Again, like I said, personalize your thread colors or embellishments based on the recipient and you can have some really great Christmas gifts to give um, either before the holidays, at your holiday gathering, or as holiday gifts. So these would also be great for Secret Santa, co-workers, uh, things like that. Really, really cute ideas. So, all right, I'm going to double check that I have addressed all the questions. If I didn't get to your question today and you need an answer immediately, please, please reach out to us at info at sulky.com so we can get your questions answered and help you work through your projects or your product concerns. All right. Ordered two mystery boxes. All right. They are telling me low, low stock. So be sure if you want to get one, grab one up now. This deal is only going to be available. Let's see. Available until tonight at midnight. So for only 30 bucks, you can get one of the Sulky Holiday, 
holiday mystery boxes. Um, and, you know, they're so fun to open and just see what's in store for you. Um, I just love, I love stuff like this. It's just so fun to get in the mail. All right. And yes, you could make your ornaments without the wooden frame. Absolutely. You could make them and just sew another fabric piece to them, turn them right side out through a little opening, stuff them with a little bit of fiber fill, hand sew them closed, and you could have a little circular fabric ornament featuring your great little design or your personalized monogram. Um, that's a great idea as well. Christmas present to myself. I know. How many of you out there, you get all of these, you know, great deals delivered to your inbox or, you know, in the um, Sunday paper and um, in the mail and all these, and um, you buy all the Christmas presents that you need for yourself, first and foremost. <laughs> all right. Sharon wants to know, did you already mention the free Joy pillow wrap? Just saw it. Um, yes, actually, we went through that tutorial, um, was it last week or the week before? I think it was the week before. Um, it's called um, Rap Star. It's the So What Rap Star episode. And that pillow wrap, we did the machine embroidery version of the Winter Greens alphabet. So the Joy Pillow Wrap features the machine embroidery designs. And you can go and watch that on our YouTube channel, or you can kind of sc scroll through our Facebook page or go to our Facebook videos um, and find that episode. I think it is episode 102 of So What? Uh, so you can watch me go through that entire project as well. It's a free pattern at sulky.com uh, for the Winter Greens Pillow Wrap. So if you are looking for either the hand embroidery design which again is free with purchase of your mystery box, the machine embroidery design collection, or that pillow wrap, just search wintergreens at sulky.com and you'll find all of those good things. All right. And yes, fun project to start a youngster on hand sewing. Love it. All right, ordered my box as well. Very good. And also, when you all get your Sulky Mystery Boxes, we would love to see you opening those or a picture of you with your box. Post those to social media with the hashtag 2021 mystery box and hashtag so better with Sulky so that we can see what's in your box and what you got. Um, we absolutely love to see what you create with Sulky products um, and just the joy on your face when you get to open up these fun mystery boxes where we don't know what's inside. Um, or if you made something using the items in your mystery box, we would love to see that as well. And we lo would love to feature you. Okay, do you enlarge the letter in a photocopier? So you most certainly can do that um, if you would like, or when you're printing it out, in your printer settings, you can usually enlarge um, the paper size, or not the paper size, you can enlarge the um, what you're going to print. So um, make sure you do a print preview so you can make sure that the letter that you want that's featured on that page, because there's a few letters per page of the hand embroidery pattern, uh, make sure that your letter is on the page that you've enlarged, and then you can print it out at 150%, at 200%, whatever you need for the project that you want to create. All right, can't wait for my mystery box to come. <laughs> All right, just ordered my llama kit and mystery box. You know, if you need to get to that free shipping threshold, that's a great idea. If you're gonna be joining us for the Lovely Llama webcast, and you're grabbing up a kit for that, put that in your cart along with your mystery box, and you're on your way to free shipping. Um, so no need to pay someone uh, for shipping when you can use that money towards another product. So that's a great idea. Very, very good. Now, if you are signing up for New Year's Eve, oh, I almost forgot. That's our giveaway today. 
for all of you who have stuck around this far watching the So What today, our giveaway today is I will be comping someone in to the New Year's Eve Sew Along event. So for all of you who are liking, sharing, commenting the posts on the post today on the live stream, um, you are automatically eligible to win a event ticket for our virtual New Year's Eve Sew Along. All right. Woo, I almost forgot that. So with entry to your event, you will be getting the Aurora bag from Sally Tomato, this pattern. You'll be getting it for free. The pattern is valued at $9.99. You will also be getting the uh, Sewist Patches Machine Embroidery Collection from Sulky, absolutely free, with entry to the event. That's also valued at $9.99. So one lucky person is going to win all of that and get it for free. Um, I will be picking a person at random who is commenting, liking, sharing today's live stream on YouTube or Facebook. And don't forget, if you want to join us for this event, register today or tomorrow by midnight to get $4 off your registration fee. It is only $5.99 right now. And as of December 2nd, it's going to go up to $9.99. So make sure you register today or tomorrow to take advantage of that great deal. Otherwise, you'll pay $9.99, but you will still get the bag pattern and that machine embroidery design collection with purchase of your event. So it's still a great deal no matter, when, no matter how you look at it. Kits for this event are available at sallytomato.com. And if you click through in the description of today's post, I linked to how to sign up for New Year's Eve, how to sign up for the Lovely Llama, how to grab your mystery box, and I linked to the tutorial for the place card project so that you can get all the how-tos, the supply lists, everything you need to create this cute project that we went over today. If you're not seeing all of those links, be sure to hit the little see more button, whether you're watching on YouTube or on Facebook, and the entire description will pop up so you can get all the links that you need and easily click on over to register for the events or to grab up the products that I talked about today. So I hope to see you all. Um, is it next week? It's in a couple of weeks. What day is it today? In two weeks for the Lovely Llama webcast. Again, it's on a Monday. Usually our webcasts are on Tuesdays, so make sure to mark your calendar for December 13th at 2 p.m. Eastern time. That's when we will be going live with Desiree of Desiree's Designs. And then be sure also to just schedule your New Year's Eve plans around our sew along so that you can join us live. Again, if you can't join us live, you can watch it anytime on demand after that live event ends. So no worries. Be sure to register. I will see you all then. And I will see you all next week for another episode of So What. Thank you for joining me this afternoon. Have a great rest of your day.